Hey everyone, it is Ujwa. It is so great to see you. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. If you're new to this channel, I'm a recently graduated chemistry student here in the DC area, and I make videos on being pre-med, productivity, and lifestyle habits. So if any of those things sound appealing to you, please consider subscribing. But let's get to today's video. As you may have seen already, I have made videos in terms of how to tackle the MCAT and applying for medical school. In line with the MCAT series, I wanted to release a video talking about the different resources out there. When I was preparing for my MCAT, I remember feeling really overwhelmed and inundated with the amount of options there were in terms of how to review my content and also how to practice. There's Kaplan, there's Princeton Review, there's the myriad of AMC resources, and navigating all these and fitting those into our study schedule can seem really overwhelming. And so I wanted to make this video comparing and contrasting the different options that you guys have and also giving you guys a sample study plan that I used when I was preparing for my MCAT that you can use to help start your preparation. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, so let's jump right into the different resources that we have at our disposal when we're preparing for the MCAT. But before we do so, let's go ahead and talk about why you should be treating the MCAT a lot more differently from your previous normal exams. One thing that I like to tell a lot of students is when I came out of the MCAT exam, the first thing that ran through my mind was, wow, that exam tested probably no more than 10% of the content that I had reviewed and spent time memorizing. And the fact is, that is very true. The MCAT is not a content-based exam, and that's something that I realized the hard way going through my practice exams. The MCAT is a strategy-focused exam, and it rewards those who focus on the appropriate strategies to tackle the different sections of the exam. That's exactly why I created the videos that I did. Each of my videos talks about a strategy that you can use to tackle the different sections on the MCAT, strategies that you can practice and hone that'll essentially allow you to get through those passages a lot more quickly with a greater accuracy, ultimately allowing you to be as successful as you possibly can be on the exam. And so the crux of the matter is the MCAT is not a content-based exam. You memorize all these things, you go through all these review books because you wanna make sure you have everything covered since the MCAT is only gonna be testing 10% of it but you don't know which 10% that's gonna be. The rest of your review needs to be focused on practice, and that's exactly why I tell a lot of students to dedicate essentially their preparation time in the following manner. Spend 40% of it on content review if you have a lot of time, and then the remaining 60% on practice. Now, if you're on a shorter schedule, what I like to recommend is increasing the amount of time you spend to practice because that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. That's where you're going to get the most score improvement because you need to practice effective strategies that are going to help you score well on the exam. And so if you're on a shorter time frame, usually that means increasing your schedule breakdown by the following, 25% maybe for content review and 75% remaining for practice. And we're gonna talk about the different resources you should be doing, uh, you should be using uh, to help essentially supplement your content review and your practice. So let's jump right to it. For content review, we have two goals. And so we wanna have resources that are gonna help us accomplish these two goals. First, we need to maximize understanding. We need to have a go-to resource that'll cover all the content areas we need, essentially, to know, um, and we don't need to reference other outside resources. So we need to have a good resource that's concise and has enough depth and to the point. Two, we need to have one that maximizes our ability to undergo memorization. So there's specific tools separate from the review resources I'll talk about that can help aid in this process. But essentially, we don't wanna have a resource that has so many details that memorization becomes very cumbersome and difficult. We need to have a resource that'll go through all the concepts in enough depth to help maximize and ease our process of understanding and memorizing. And so the different resources I'm gonna be covering are the following, Kaplan, Princeton Review, Khan Academy, Curve Setter, which not many people know about, but which I did uh, come to learn about later in my content review. And then Anki, um, if you have been watching any of my previous videos, you'll quickly realize that I love Anki. Um, I'm all for active learning and spaced repetition, which is essentially the crux of Anki. And so I'm gonna talk about how you can kind of use Anki, but not go through too much in depth uh, in terms of that. So if you wanna see me talk more about Anki, the different add-ons you can use, the different decks you can use, how you should be using Anki, whether that be in your MCAT prep or your pre-med courses, let me know in a comment down below and I will consider making a, another video talking about Anki in depth. Um, and then the resources that I didn't cover in here, um, 
I essentially did look at those resources. Um, I've talked to other peers who have used those resources, so I have an understanding of those, and I'll talk about why I didn't include those in this in this list here. Um, from my understanding, these resources were the most high yield and the most effective use of our time, um, but there are other resources out there that may be more cost effective, and so um, I can't really speak to those. But if you are interested in seeing maybe another video talking more about those, let me know in a comment down below, and once again, I will consider making another video. But let's jump right to it. So first things first, in my MCAT prep, I used Kaplan. I didn't go through all the content books. I only went through some, which uh, I felt were most relevant for my uh, areas that I needed most revision in. So for Kaplan, what I realized was, uh, and you'll realize when I go ahead and talk about the different uh, ranking of the different resources, but Kaplan goes through a lot of concepts in enough depth that you need to know them. It doesn't go through too much. Um, it doesn't give you an over in it. It doesn't over inundate you with too much information. It, it seems to be kind of like the just right uh, amount of information. And then it, it doesn't, since it doesn't go through things in such extreme depth, it doesn't take too long to review. Um, there's actually a lot of Kaplan quick sheets available that kind of summarize the topics in a chapter. Um, and there are a lot of quick sheets people have made on Reddit um, that have already gone through the Kaplan review books that can be really helpful. And so that, that just speaks to how the material is concise and to the point it can, it can really well be summarized. Um, another plus point to Kaplan, which I'm going to be touching on when I talk about Anki, is a lot of people have gone through Kaplan, and as a result, a lot of people have made Anki decks, which correspond chapter by chapter to the different Kaplan review books. And that is, that, that is in my opinion, an excellent, excellent supplement to Kaplan, and that'll help add that memorization component that I talked about, the two goals for content review. We need to have good understanding, which the Kaplan review books provide, and then for memorization, you cannot get better than a resource like Anki. All right, so Princeton Review, um, direct contrast with Kaplan. I did go through uh, a couple of review books, not in their entirety, but just to see whether this would be a good resource. And one thing that essentially uh, made Princeton Review not one of the most um, most important resources on my list was that it goes through concepts in extreme depth, almost to the level of depth that we touched on in the pre-med classes that I took. And that was essentially a red flag for me. When we're doing our MCAT prep, what's really important is it, the review book needs to be concise and it needs to be simple and easy to get through. If it's going through so much depth, depth that I probably am not going to be tested on, that's a complete waste of my time. And therefore, I chose to stay away from Princeton Review for that reason in terms of content uh, review. Khan Academy is a very good resource. It's a very good supplementary resource. Now that's uh, essentially the point that I want to drive in. Khan Academy is an excellent supplementary resource to any review book that you're going to be using. And so that means if there's a concept you need to you know, get a little bit more uh, context over, if there's a concept you're a little bit more weak on, going to a quick Khan Academy video is probably the best things that I can recommend. But in terms of going to all of the Khan Academy videos for the MCAT, and since the AMC has a partnership with Khan Academy, they have videos on essentially all the topics covered in the MCAT, that can be very, very, very time consuming, and it does go through a lot of depth, some of which is not too relevant. Something you'll realize once you start practice problems for the MCAT is the passages only expect you to know a little bit of content, and anything else you need to know additionally is provided in the passage. They're mainly testing you on, as I said before, it's not a content-based exam, so they're mainly testing you on how you synthesize this information and apply it. So Khan Academy is a great resource not to use by itself, but it's an excellent supplementary resource. Curve Setter is one not a lot of students know about. Um, this is something that I found, to, uh, found essentially through a Google search uh, very late into my content review, so I didn't really use it too much, but something that I did notice about the material was it's very concise, like extremely concise. They take different topics, break it down to like a series of 20 to 25 lectures, I believe, um, and they have essentially a lecture that's recorded of going through a PowerPoint and they give you the PowerPoints that you can basically just skip the lecture and just take the information from the PowerPoints off of and that's basically giving you all the stuff you need to know. It's nothing more and nothing less and so it's extremely concise um, and it doesn't take too long to review so th they have courses that cover every single content area on the MCAT and to me one of the main reasons I wouldn't recommend students use this is because it's expensive. Um, and since this process is already extremely expensive, there is no point in going through a resource that puts all that information in a nice concise format when you can, with your own uh, ability to discern which information is important and not, and your ability to essentially use effective resources, you really don't need to have another 
third party person putting all that information in a nice, easy to understand format and package. I think that, you know, that's something that shouldn't cost that much. Um, it, you know, it's, it's free if we go ahead and break down the information that we need from resources that is important by ourselves. We don't need to pay 500 bucks to someone to go ahead and essentially package information into a nice digestible format because that's just not worth the price tag. So. Personally, Curve Setter is a great resource if you have the money and if you're willing to spend it. But other than that, I really wouldn't recommend paying that much. And then finally, Anki. So I touched on this before, but Anki is a memorization tool. It essentially emphasizes active learning and spaced repetition. So if you review Psych and Soch for the MCAT, one concept you're gonna pick up on is the Ebbinghaus decay curve. So that curve essentially talks about how the concepts that we learn and things we memorize, we forget at an exponential rate. And so to prevent that from happening, we need to keep reviewing these concepts at a defined interval. And essentially what this whole concept uh, of spaced repetition is talking about is that interval gets larger and larger at which we keep disrupting this decay curve. And so at some point we're gonna be memorizing that information and it'll stay in our long-term memory. And so that's the whole point of Anki. It is excellent for minimizing the amount of time you spend on your content review because think about it. When you're going through all these resources, you're going through all this material, what a lot of students do is they take notes. I did that myself. When I went through the Biochem Kaplan Review Book, when I went through the Bio Kaplan Review Book, I took notes on every single chapter. And the fact is that is extremely time consuming. It slows us down and time is something that we can't buy. And time is very important and time can translate to success on the MCAT if spent in the right place. So my recommendation, since Anki has a lot of pre-made decks, especially going through the different chapters in Kaplan, use those pre-made decks. That means, and I'm gonna talk about this when we go through our study plan the, that I'm gonna talk about at the end of this video, but basically go through the Kaplan chapters, read the chapter, don't take notes, and then go ahead and unsuspend the cards from the appropriate chapter in the Anki deck that you use, and I'll talk about which ones are recommended, but go ahead and do that and that'll help you review the content, keep up with your reviews as you go through your preparation period and you will never need to open that Kaplan book again. And that's our goal. We wanna have a resource that can allow us to accomplish that. And to me, the ability that Anki has and to provide us that opportunity is just phenomenal. And so that's why I highly recommend using Kaplan paired up with Anki. That is the best combo that I can think about. Um, some people do like making their own Anki cards and also, on that note, you can modify the cards that you get from these pre-made decks to add cards on concepts you feel more weak in and also to add more details to the cards. And so it's not like these cards are you know, uneditable. You can definitely change them up and make them more personalized. But some people like to make their own Anki cards. And so for those people, what I would like to caution is that that takes a lot of time and time is as I said before something that we don't have a lot of and we want to use effectively and so using a lot of pre-made decks and there's a lot of pre-made decks you can take a look at the different ones and see which ones work best for you um, but Anki is an excellent resource and I highly recommend people consider it there is a small learning curve but to be honest with you it is a very small learning curve um, it's actually the reason why some people turn to Quizlet but I think that people just don't give it enough time to really set in. Um, I've been using Anki for my pre-med courses as well. And to be honest with you, it's minimized a lot of the amount of time that I spend in terms of taking notes and also preparing for exams. And so I cannot recommend this more highly. Um, and so other resources, the reason why I didn't include those is because one thing is they some of them didn't cover all the things you needed to know and that's a huge red flag so all the resources I talked about right now they cover all the things you need to know and that's definitely like that's probably one of the most fundamental things every resource should do for us some of the other resources they straight up missed concepts and missed topics that are essential and high yield and the AMC tells you is high yield and so that's a huge red flag and for that reason I didn't include those other problems were that they just weren't in, as succinct and concise as the ones described here. So I talked about how Princeton Review goes in depth. If you take a look at some others, you'll see that they go through uh, a completely unnecessary level of depth in terms of uh, the different details for topics. And so for those two reasons, I didn't include those other resources. Um, and so these are the best ones. And so on that note, ranking the different resources based on everything that I talked about so far, Kaplan and Anki is the best combination that I can think of in terms of content review, and I've clearly delineated that in this chart. After that, Khan Academy is an excellent supplementary resource, and if you want to use Khan Academy, if you have enough time to get through all the Khan Academy videos, you will not leave any stone unturned. You will go through all the things you need to know, and that is a very comprehensive resource, but 
fact that it's a comprehensive resource and takes so much time is the reason why I recommend using it as a supplementary resource. And finally, we do have Princeton Review and then Curve Setter. I set those two um, at the bottom here because for Princeton Review, as I said, goes through too much depth, takes too long to get through all those books, and it's very important for us to keep that factor of time in, in our minds. And then finally, Curve Setter is just, it's an excellent resource, it's just expensive. And so if the money does not matter at all to you, you can straight up stick to Curve Setter and you will be completely fine in terms of your content review. But the fact is money is, money is a tangible factor that you know we should all keep in mind because this whole process is not cheap. It's very important to keep you know financial uh, resources in mind and so given that I placed it in the B category but if the money was not even a factor this could very easily be in the A or S tier um, and so that is it for ranking of resources for content review now practice now we have practice resources and so the goals for practice one essentially we need these resources to allow us to apply our content as you're gonna see some resources straight up ask generic questions that just test your level of memorizing a specific concept. That does no good for us because the MCAT, as you already know, has passages and it requires synthesis, understanding, and application. And so it's really important for us to do all those things when we're doing our practice. Second, practice has to cover content gaps. It has to go through everything. Um, if you're just if your practice problems are so high level that they don't let you really test your understanding of material and your memorization of the topics, that's not going to help you. It needs to be both allowing us to apply the content and also covering all the different content areas uh, so that when we go through our practice, anything that we may have missed during our content review, we can pick up on and then, you know, go ahead and review those, make note of that so we never miss that topic again. But on that note, so as you can see, there's a lot of different resources for practice. Um, these are basically all the resources that I use at some point in some form or another, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rank these on the next slide. But as an overview, first of all, AMC resources, so resources made by the actual test makers themselves are the gold standard. They are made for the new exam, at least the AMC section banks are. As you'll see, the question packs were made for the old exam so they can seem a little bit easier and they don't have long passages with questions corresponding to them. So that's why the section banks are a lot more important and the full length exams because any resource that's a representative of the actual exam is a high yield resource. And that's exactly why these are the best that you can essentially get in terms of practice. UWorld is the next best thing after AMC resources. If you literally finished all of your section banks and the full lengths, you cannot go wrong with UWorld. I know that there is a fee associated with this, and although I'm completely against paying, um, I do know that UWorld uh, does have a free trial, and so I highly recommend using UWorld for your practice, especially if you're digging into your practice early on in your preparation period because you want to save off those AMC full lengths. UWorld is the way to go. Jack Weston is an exclusively cars focused resource and that's the only reason why I'm recommending Jack Weston. Um, there aren't many resources to practice for cars. I realized that really early on, but then I came across Jack Weston. Now, Jack Weston, some passages can be easier than the actual cars passages, I will agree on that. But when you are trying to save those AMC question packs for cars for a little later on in terms of your practice, Jack Weston is excellent. So when you start off your content review. Cars is the one thing, there's no really content to review other than a strategy, and I made another video on car strategy. But Jack Weston can really provide you that with a consistent source of passages, and trust me, there is almost an infinite number of passages, so you'll never run out. Um, but essentially, it allows you to consistently hone in on your reading comprehension skills, and that is going to pay dividends when it comes time for your full-length uh, practice exams and for the um, actual test day. So Jack Weston is a very good resource that I recommend using from day one of your preparation. Kaplan. Um, so Kaplan has questions inside the books. Those review questions are basically they are beyond useful, uh, or sorry, they're useless. Uh, those res those questions basically just ask straight up memorization questions. They're not asking you to apply anything. It's not helpful at all. Um, the Kaplan full lengths do also tend to be easier than the actual exam, so it's not that representative. Um, but of course, a full length is a full length, and there's there may not be so many resources available to you. So if you have Kaplan full lengths, use them, but definitely don't want to take them too seriously in terms of how well you're doing. We want to use the AMC full lengths to be good indicators of where we are in terms of progress and in terms of where we stand um, uh, before we take the actual exams. 
Princeton Review. Um, so these full lengths and these practice uh, passages tend to be actually a little bit more overcomplicated and more difficult. Um, that's a good thing because it helps you prepare in, on a higher level. But the problem with that is it's not that representative of the actual exam. And as I said before, we want to use resources that are representative of the actual exam. So Princeton Review and Kaplan, I kind of throw in the same boat. Kaplan is just easier. Princeton Review is just harder, but they're not that representative of the actual exam. Khan Academy has many practice passages and actually Jack Weston's website takes all those practice passages and puts those in the MCAT software format. So um, if you want to go through Khan Academy passages and almost like a simulation type of feel uh, for test day, use Jack Weston's website for that. Basically, they have a lot. Um, they don't tend to be very representative, but it's an excellent source of practice. And so if you're doing content review, if you're in that early 40% stage of content review and you want to you know, actually try to apply this knowledge um, that you're, you know, you're acquiring and you're reviewing, Khan Academy Passages may be a good, uh, good source of review material there. AMC question packs, uh, as I kind of briefly said before, they were made for the old exam, so they tend to be a little bit easier. And so they're not that representative of the new exam. Um, they can, uh, kind of similar to Khan Academy passages, I would recommend using those as kind of practice during your content reviews. Um, one thing is, of course, the CARS question pack. So CARS, from my memorizing, uh, from my understanding, they don't have a section bank, but CARS does have a question pack. Um, so the CARS question packs are extremely representative of the actual exam because CARS didn't change from the old exam to the new exam. And so you should be using those. Um, so those are all your practice resources and all your practice options. Now, in terms of ranking these, it's going to be essentially falling in line with what I said. All the AMC resources, other than the question packs, are going to be very high yield pieces of information. They're in the highest tier right there. The section banks are actually harder than the actual exam, but they're essentially representative of the hardest passages you'll see. If you can do well in section banks, you are, you are prepared for the actual exam. Um, but don't feel discouraged if you don't do so well on them because, as I said before, those passages are very difficult. Um, and so that's why they're a good source of practice. Um, you have the practice exams, all the full lengths. They're very good uh, in terms of preparing. A lot of people like to save these off till the end. Um, but as you'll see when we talk about the sample study schedule, I like to finish off the full lengths. I like to tell students to finish them off uh, at least a month and a half beforehand because you need to have enough time to gauge where you're at and cover any gaps that you may have. In the next level, we have UWorld. Um, as I said before, that's the next best thing for AMC uh, level resources. And then you have Jack Weston. Um, the reason is because Jack Weston is an excellent non-AMC CARS resource. We have Princeton Review that comes afterwards. The reason why I put Princeton Review ahead of Kaplan is because it's harder. And when, you have, when, you're, when you're preparing on a higher level, that can only be somewhat beneficial to you, even if it's not that representative of the actual exam. Kaplan, I put next. And then finally, I put Khan Academy and the question packs because Khan Academy, as I said, not representative of the actual exam. And the question packs were just straight up made for the old exam. So don't expect your, uh, your success on the question packs in terms of practice to be anywhere near indicative of how you'll perform in the actual exam. Take that with a grain of salt. But of course, the CARS question packs are an exception. They are the same as the, same, uh, as the CARS passages you'll see in the actual exam. All right, so important points. We've talked about a lot of different things. This video has gone on for a long time. But first things first, there is no set amount of time one should be spending in terms of hours of prep. Um, when I go through Reddit, a lot of things I see are some people talk about how, um, oh, we should be spending 500 hours cumulative in terms of MCAT prep, and then we're good, we're solid. And that's just not true. Remember, quality over quantity. It depends and it matters more of how you're spending your time because as I said, MCAT's not a content-based exam. It's a strategy-focused exam. Your success on this exam is purely and linearly essentially dependent upon how well you put your time and how well you spend it. And so putting that in practice, using high yield strategies is very important. And that's exactly why I recommend looking at some of my previous videos. So second point, as I said, knowing a lot doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna do well. And I realized that the hard way through my practice. Practice exams are essentially the way to go. Practice, practice, practice. I cannot hone that in enough. As If you've seen any of my previous videos, you've probably heard me say this a thousand times. Practice is the best way to hone in those strategies I talk about and also prepare yourself for the actual exam. And finally, set aside breaks. I know that we talk about um, preparing for the MCAT and in a continuous stretch, it's a long, arduous task, but the fact is, you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta take care of your mental health. And that's something that no one really told me when I was preparing. Um, and so I just went at it. And to be honest with you, that can just lead to burnout the closer you get to your exam. So make sure you keep in mind, it's really important and healthy to keep a social life. 
and maintain that essential level of sanity during this preparation period. Um, and if that means taking a day off each week from your prep, you can totally afford to do that. There is literally uh, no reason why you shouldn't be able to at least take a day off each week in your whole preparation period to relax and not do anything MCAT related. You should totally be able to do so. All right, sample study plan is the last thing I wanted to conclude this video with. Um, first things first, we want to, when we're starting off our study period, um, we want to make sure we start off by covering content areas we are weakest in. Um, and so if you personally feel you don't have any weak areas, start off with the most important subject. And so that means biochemistry, biology. That's how I tailored my prep. When I started content review, I went through MCAT biochem immediately. Then I went through MCAT um, organic chemistry, and then I went through MCAT uh, biology. Of course, if you've seen my previous videos, you've noted that uh, you may have seen me talk about how orgo is not that important, so I would hold off on that till the end. But essentially, make sure you're covering the things you don't know first, because that's where your points are going to be at. By going over a review book in an area you're very well versed in, you're not going to be doing yourself any good, because you already know the material probably, you are probably well versed in it. It's a lot more effective and a good use of your time to, early on in your prep, when you don't have the stress of getting close to your test date, to focus on the things you really don't know. Next, don't take notes and use Yankee pre-made decks. Now, this is going to be very subjective. Um, this is something that I felt was a very good strategy for students. Um, although I myself did take notes, I realized later on, halfway through my content review, that that wasn't an effective use of my time. So I switched to Yankee note cards, and I found that switching to Yankee note cards was the best thing um, for your review. So. That's why I use Anki pre-made decks. Um, I'll add some links in the description below for some of these decks. The one I recommend is Mile Down, um, just because it goes through, I believe, the Kaplan books. Um, but if that's not the one that does so, I do know that there was another one which I used um, that goes through and breaks down the cards for every single Kaplan chapter. And the key here is consistency. Make sure you keep up with your Anki reviews in order to be successful, because the fact is we want to go through a review book once and never open it again. And so that means reviewing that content using Anki flashcards at a consistent pace that's dictated by the Anki software. So make sure that you kind of keep up with your Anki reviews to make sure you don't forget that content material. Um, and so, as I said before, earlier on in this video, when you read a chapter, go ahead and review the Anki cards corresponding to that chapter based on the deck you use, and then just keep up with your reviews. The next thing is, um, essentially, during your preparation time, in terms of content review, use non-essential practice resources. So non-essential means AMC question packs, Khan Academy, Kaplan Princeton Review, feel free to use those then. And then save those high yield ones for your actual practice. That's going to be a very good use of your time. And then, and so on that note, essentially for that practice, it's going to be UWorld, section banks, very important to use section banks, and then a series of AMC full end tests that, as I said before, I recommend finishing at least a month and a half in advance. So you know where you stand. It's very important to know where you stand at least a month and a half in advance. A lot of people like to hold them off till the week of the actual exam. First of all, you don't want to be taking a full length a week of on the actual exam. You're just going to be burning yourself out. Second, there is no point because at that point, if you're, if you're a week out from your exam, you take a full length, then you realize maybe your score fell. How is that going to be helping you? Because now you are, first of all, you're stressed because you're really close to your exam. Two, you're not going to be able to review this exam properly because it's going to take some time to review it and relearn and essentially go through any content things that you missed. That's really not a good use of your time and you don't want to be in that position of making a decision of pushing your exam back a week before. If you go ahead and give yourself a month and a half to think about it and see where you're at, if you need to push your exam back, so be it. Doing well on this exam is more important than whether you take it in the appropriate time, whether you apply this cycle or not. It's more important that you strategize for this exam such that you take it once and you do well. All right. So go ahead and have a strategy also for reviewing your full end exams. That means going over questions you miss and going over questions you had a difficult time on. You may have guessed, but you still got it right. It's very important to have an effective strategy of reviewing concepts. My strategy was an Excel spreadsheet for each full length. I went ahead and recorded the concepts that I missed and I wanted to review. And then I made sure that I either created Anki cards on them or I reviewed this Excel spreadsheet periodically to make sure that I had those concepts refreshed and I never missed those again. Our goal is to take our full lengths, make sure that anything we miss, we never miss again by reviewing that material. And with each full length, the goal is essentially, it's a, uh, it's a hypothetical goal. It's not necessarily going to be true, but 
we want to never miss the concepts that we miss in one full end on the next. And so with each subsequent full end, we want to keep getting better and better and better. And so hypothetically, our score should only improve, never uh, go down. But of course, that's not true. In reality, exams are different. How you're tested on the same concept can be really different. And so it's just really important to keep track of these things so that we try to get as close to this hypothetical of getting better each time as possible. Um, and finally, as I said before, Jack Weston, use that from the beginning to practice for cars. Even before you jump right into your content review, make sure you use Jack Weston to review for your cars section. Um, it's as close as you can get to a non-AMC resource that is representative of the actual section. Cars is the section you cannot prepare for last minute. Well, you can't prepare for any section last minute, but cars is one section where strategy also makes a huge difference. And so if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and check out my previous video uh, where I talk about an effective strategy to use for the cars section. All right, so um, that is basically it for this video. I know this went very long. Um, and so if you're still with me up until this point, um, thank you. And if you do have any questions though, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below, send me a DM. I do respond to all Instagram DMs. And keep in mind, uh, although I know that right now the MCAT test dates has, uh, it's essentially been in a huge frenzy. They now are offering three tests per date and now they have around three test dates, I believe, and people are still afraid that they may cancel the dates they are offering. So if you're in that situation, um, please just don't feel stressed out and worried. Um, everyone is in the same boat. Medical schools understand. I remember um, hearing in the news, California actually canceled their SAT, ACT requirement. And so I know that doesn't apply to med schools, but med schools are gonna be similarly understanding um, if you don't have an exam score in until much further on in the cycle. So just make sure you focus on being healthy, staying safe, and I think that's gonna be it for this video. So uh, thank you for watching everyone.